Welcome to another video from Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and today I would like to show you how to create a much better filter experience for your users. In other words, how to set up a pop-up slicer panel in Power BI. But first of all, make sure to like this video and hit the subscribe button so you never miss a new episode. Clicking on the bell icon also helps a lot. What is a slicer panel and why should you add one to your reports? It can help report users to gain some valuable screen real estate and just in general provide a smoother, more refined user experience. The slicer panel can hide all of our slicers but still make them available for report users within a click of a button. Some report creators built a dedicated report page for slicers, but as I mentioned in a previous video, in most cases, users are too afraid to slice and dice the report without seeing immediately what's happening. I would also be confused to apply filters without seeing the results. Luckily, with some advanced design ideas in Power BI, it's not rocket surgery to achieve a clear look and feel for our report. So let's head over to my PC to see this in action. On the first report page, I have two visuals on the top and the slicers on the bottom. Imagine having even more slicers here in a much more complex model. Does this look familiar to you? I'm not going to say that this setup is wrong or not useful, as it does the trick. However, we can all agree that losing roughly one fourth of the screen to the slicers is wasteful. In most cases, we have very limited space on a report page, and we have to use it wisely. In addition to that, making sure that visuals on the report page are big enough is a crucial design consideration. If I start slicing and dicing the report, it behaves nicely, and the visuals on the top are going to change accordingly. So let's select Australia and USA as countries. Apple as customer group, store as customer type, and finally litware as brand. If we have a look at the visual on the right hand side, it tells us that our total cost decreased from Q2 2017 to Q4 2019. It was roughly 1.4 million and dropped to 770,000. So almost halved. But does this graph tell us visually the same story? It doesn't really look like that. And the reason behind it is it doesn't have enough space or screen real estate to provide a better visual story. Wouldn't it be nice to somehow hide the slicers when we don't need them? Of course it would be great, and as you probably guessed it, this is what we are going to cover today. As I mentioned in this intro, it is not too difficult, but it is not an out-of-the-box solution, or at least not at the time of the recording of this video. So let's go back to Power BI. Here we are with our two visuals, and this time you can see a more dramatic drop when it comes to visual data representation. But hold on, why do we have a pizza slicer here? And where are my filters? If I hover over the slicer, you can see that something is going on. And once I click on it, something else pops up. Well, that's right, this is our slicer panel. Obviously, we have the same selection as in the previous report page, because my slicers are in sync. But most importantly, if I want to hide this, I just need to click on the back button. Just like that, we gain back heaps of space that we can use to fill with more visuals or just to achieve a better distribution for our existing visuals. And what do we need to create this pop-up panel? First of all, let me show you the elements in this report page. I click on View and Selection. Here we have the slicer panel as a grouped element, two core visuals, and the slicer button. 
Under the slicer panel group, I have five slicers, a back button and the background for the pop-up panel. And what do I have under the bookmarks? Under the bookmarks section, I have slicer on and slicer off as two bookmarks. If I click on the slicer off bookmark, you cannot see the slicer panel, as it is going to be hidden. And if I click on the slicer on bookmark, my slicer panel is going to be visible. So my slicer panel is nothing more than a bookmark, where I use two buttons to switch between visible and hidden elements. If I click on the slicer button and head over to action, you can see that my action here is to activate the slicer on bookmark. Now for the back button, under the action, I'm activating the slicer off bookmark. Now one really important thing here to keep in mind, both of these bookmarks are created without the data button selected. We don't want our bookmarks to change any data or update any slicers. Just show or hide this pop-up panel. When all of this is published to the service, it is going to provide a smooth experience and the only thing that the users are going to notice is a much cleaner report. In most cases, there is no need to constantly show users their selections. Report users want to slice and dice the report to their likings and then utilize as much screen real estate as possible. It is even more important if your report is accessed from laptops or tablet devices, as for those devices, every extra pixel counts. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you learned something new about report design and how to hide your slicers in your report. Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to get notified when a new video is available. Stay tuned for more. See ya!